So here comes the next question, question eight. If a over b equals two, what is the value of four b over a? Okay, so for this question, uh, what I would like to do is to flip both sides. And again, they write it in this frustrating way with this middle aspect, but there is no middle, okay? So now, uh, effectively, this is two over one, and we can flip both the left and the right sides upside down. That is a legal operation, so long as we don't have an inequality sign. If we had an inequality sign, it would be invalid. Uh, we then have to would, would have to switch the inequality sign in that case, um, if we wanted to flip both sides. Anyway, so now we have b over a equals one half, and what we can do here is we can plug in the one half for this b over a. We get four times one half, and that of course is equal to whoops, that is equal to two. Answer choice C. Now, if you don't like that particular method, there is a few alternatives. So one alternative is we can solve a over b equals two. We can solve it for one of the letters. Uh, if we move the b up here, for example, again, moving diagonally is, is a valid move. Um, a is equal to two b, right? And then we could plug in for a. So we could plug in two b right there, and we get four b over two b. And of course, the b's would cancel, assuming that they're not equal to zero. Uh, so we get four over two, which equals to two. Okay. Question nine. What is the solution x, y to the system of equations above? So for this system, the first thing I would want to do is I'd want to write the y's underneath y and the x's underneath x. Um, just because if we're going to use the stack and solve method, also known as the elimination method, uh, it's always nice to have them set up uh, on top of one another. So let's see. What I would like to do here is I'd like to double the bottom equation. So that would give me minus 2x plus 2y is equal to, sorry, plus 4y is equal to negative 38. Then I would rewrite the top equation right here. And now notice that the middle terms are both the same. So this is a thing that I'm allowed to do because I'm changing the left side and the right side. So if I know two equals two, I'm allowed to multiply by three and I get six equals six, the equation still holds. So I'm always allowed to multiply left and right side by a constant, which is what I'm do doing in this case. Okay, so my new system of equations, um, I'd like to use elimination method, also known as stack and solve, in order to get rid of the y's, okay? So the first thing I do is I would negate every single term in one of these two equations. I'm going to choose the top equation, okay? So this minus will become a plus two, and this plus four will become a minus four. And this minus 38 becomes plus 38. So effectively what I've done is I've negated every single term, left and right sides. Effectively I've multiplied by negative one on the entire equation. And just as we see before, um, multiplying through an equation by a constant, uh, left and right sides, is valid. Right. So long as I don't have a uh, inequality. So if I had an inequality, x is less than two, and I multiply through with a minus sign on all the terms, uh, that would make it invalid because then I'd have to also switch the inequality sign. Okay. Um, and effectively, those are the only two differences. As we discussed before, if we had, for example, one half less than x, uh, if we flip both sides, or sorry, I should actually make it one over x. If we flip both sides, we would get two is less than x. So we'd have to also switch the inequality sign. Right, so that's rule one for inequalities that makes them different than equations. And the other rule is if I have negative one is less than negative x and I switch it to positives, I also have to switch the inequality sign in that case. Okay, so those are the only two rules that make inequalities different from equations. Okay. Anyway, so we're back here to the problem, and we can cancel out these because negative four combined with positive four is zero. Uh, two combined with three is five, so you get five x. And here we're gonna get a seven and then an eight if we count up from 23. So that makes 15 total. Then we divide by five, and we get x equals to three. Now, once we know our x value, we can come to these choices, and this is the only one that has the correct x value. So normally I'd have to plug back in to find out why. 
and I can plug back in either the original equation or this equation here. Uh, but that's not necessary here because uh, B is the only choice that has 3 as the x value. Okay, question 10. For the function g defined above, a is a constant and g of 4 equals 8. So what they're doing here is they're they're plugging in 4 as their input. And another word for input, of course, is x value. So 4 is the x value and 8 is the y value. Okay, so we will do the same. We'll plug in 4 for our x value, a times 4 squared plus 24, and we'll set that equal to the output, which is 8. So 4 squared is 16, so we get 16a plus 24 equals 8, and we're going to solve for a. So we subtract 24, both sides. We get 16a is equal to negative 16, divide, and we'll find that a is equal to negative 1. Answer choice C. Uh, wait a second. So we should always check, and this is a good habit to develop, as you're circling your answer, always check to make sure you're answering the right question. And in this case, they are not asking for a, but rather g of negative 4. So now that we found out what a is, uh, g of x would equal negative 1 times x squared plus 24. Now, if we want to find g of negative 4, all we have to do is plug in negative 4 for our x value. Right? And negative 4 squared is 16. 16 times negative 1 is plus 16, or sorry, sorry uh, minus 16, plus 24, and 24 minus 16 is 8. So we end up with 8, which is actually the same as what we had here. And for those of you who have done uh, Algebra 2, um, or even pre-calc, you'll notice that this function, uh, regardless of what a is, the function is an even function. And even functions have this special property that when you input a value, let's say 4, that's going to be equal to the negative of that input in terms of its height or y value. So one way to visualize this is to look at a parabola. And the parabola will have at let's say negative 2 and positive 2, it will have the same height as each other. So even functions have this symmetry about the y-axis. And the way to tell that this function is an even function is to look at the polynomial structure. So here you see that this is x squared and also x to the 0. Both exponents are even in, in their number. So that's when you would know if it has all even powered polynomials uh, that would make it an even function. right? So if we recognize that initially then we would have been able to skip all this work and immediately conclude that whatever the value of g of 4 is, g of negative 4 would have the same output and we could have then immediately chose choice A. So a little shortcut there.